how to loop your automation. There are three steps that help you loop your automation in Axiom. The loop through data step, which is the primary method. Then we also have the jump step and the conditional jump step. Let me take you through the loop using loop through data step and show you how you can set that up. So I can open up Axiom. And I've already added a couple of steps into this automation. I've got a read data from a Google Sheet, and that's pulling in some links I've got in a Google Sheet. Then I've got a go to page step, which will obviously load a page, and then a get data step from um, the box current page. So that I'm going to use to scrape. But I need to set this automation up to loop. So I want to use a loop step, and I'm going to use a conditional. I'm sorry, I'm going to use the loop through data step. I'm going to open up the add data step. This is one of the methods I can do to add the step, the one you're all probably familiar with. Loop through data, and there's the step. I can just add it. Now, the one problem here is these steps are outside of the loop, the go to page and the get data, whereas I want them in the loop because I want this bot to loop through different URLs in the GoTo page and then scraping the data. How can I move those steps into the loop? Well, I can simply do this. I can select the steps. As you can see on screen, they've got now a tick showing. Then I can hover into the loop through data step. So the purple bar appears. I click and I simply click move here. My steps are now in the loop. Now, I'm going to undo both those and show both those meth, um, steps that I just took using the shortcut, Control-Z, and show you another way of adding a loop through data step. I'll just get rid of that step as well, so I'm now back to where I was. The other way of adding a loop through data step is that you can simply highlight the steps you want to be in the loop, then in the move bar, this gray bar you can see at the top that's appeared, I can simply click on loop, add the loop through data step, and that's done. It's now moved those steps inside my loop. That's really useful. So those are the two methods you got for adding a loop through data step. Now, to select the data you want to loop through, you can either insert some data into one of the fields of the steps within your nested loop. So for example, I'm going to click insert data and pass in the URLs from the Google Sheet. And you'll see now the loop has been set up, which I'm just circling with my pointer. And you can see it's got the token in from the loop from the Google Sheet and it's saying loop through all data. So that loop is now set up and that bot will loop through all the rows in, in the Google Sheets. So let me just show you the Google Sheets. So it'll look through all of those rows. You can, of course, pass in any data from a webhook, for example, and look through row, rows from a webhook. It doesn't have to be a Google Sheet. Now, worth bearing in mind, if you want steps, I'm just going to undo that. If you want steps to loop, they will have to be as I mentioned a short while ago, they'll have to be within the loop through data step nested. And to add new steps inside that nest, all you need to do is click add substep. And when we talk about substeps in our documentation, we are referring to steps within the nest or within the loop step. And here I can now add additional steps, for example, a click element. Now, another feature of Axiom and looping is that you can nest loops within loops. So I can add another substep and I can search for loop. And we can nest up to several levels higher than just the two that I've shown here. And I can add substeps directly into the, the nested loop through data just by clicking and open up, just opening up the step finder. Now, there are times you will want to 
output data from your loop, and you'll see at the bottom of each loop, I'm just circling it with my pointer on screen, you'll see there's a token called loop through data. And because there's a nested loop inside this loop, there's loop through data one. Those tokens will output all the data from their nest. So from the steps nested, the output data within the loop, they will output that data. And if I want to then pass that data to write to a Google Sheet, for example, I can add a write data to Google Sheet step. Oh, I've added the wrong step, so I click Control Z to undo. Then I can scroll down and click and insert data. And you can see I've now got the loop data available from both the nested loop and the loop containing the nested loop. So I can just click and add the nested data. In this case, once I've selected my content to scrape, it would be the scrape data. So that's how I can output data from a loop step. Now, another really useful aspect of the loop step is that if you want to group data together, so I can just use the loop through step without having to put um, set the loop up. You don't need to trigger the loop if you don't want to use the loop. I just want to group data, and I can just use this step to group data in any sub-step. So for example, if I wanted to, to merge some um, data that I'm reading from a Google Sheet with some data from a scrape step, then because I've grouped them inside this loop through data step, the data output at loop data two in by the token from the data output by the token from this loop step mean um, will essentially group all of that data from the sub steps contained within it. So then if I add another right step, for example, I can output the data from the loop and it will contain all the data from those steps. So that's another really useful aspect of the loop through data step is that you can just use it to group data. You can also use it to nest steps just visually so you can have a tidier axiom. So if you're doing a long form, for example, you could add all your enter text steps into a loop. So there, of course, is another way to um, instigate a loop. It's a simpler loop with less control, but if you want to do something simple like um, click a button multiple times, you could try this method. So I'm going to open up Axiom. I'm just going to go back to the start and create a new automation. I'm going to add my first step. And let's say I wanted to repeat a combination of clicks. I'm just going to add a few click steps. And another way I could add click element steps is doing a little star there and an eight. Now I'll add eight click element steps. It's a nice little shortcut. But a simple way of doing a loop would also be where I don't want to loop through any data. I just want to loop through clicking a button multiple times, for example, would be to use the jump step. So I'm going to add a jump step. Mostly the jump step will, as it pretty much sounds like, it will jump from one step to another. So I can use that to create the loop. So here's the jump step. Now to, to create the loop, all I need to do is pass in a jump to step number. And I'm going to jump back to step one. And we're going to make that jump 20 times. So of course, by the time um, those click elements were all executed, it would have done one loop already. So the maximum cycles, if you want to do 20 loops, you actually do 19 because it's already performed a single loop beforehand. But that's another simple way you could do a loop. Another form of loop we can do is with the conditional jump step. The conditional jump step features logic. The plain jump step doesn't have the logic. So one scenario here that I could use the step to create a loop for is that if I was waiting for a button to appear on the page, for example, a message button. 
So let's pretend on this Instagram page, the message button is going to load in. Once it loads in, we then want to execute a set of actions. Well, I've created a, a quick little um, prototype of an axiom here, and I've got, what I need to do first is get some data to check. So I've got a scrape step. And I'm just gonna select the header area where the word message appears. So I just wanna get the whole sort of bit of data there. Let me just, I may need to use custom selector. No, there we go there. And so that selected message as well, we can see in the text where I'm circling preview there, I'm gonna press complete. So we've got a value that we can now pass to the conditional jump step. And you can pass values from other data sources such as webhooks or um, CSVs, for example, to conditional jump steps. It doesn't have to be a scrape step. It can come from Google Sheets. Now, I've already added my conditional jump step. You could, to search for it in the step finder, just type in condition and you'll see conditional jump step. I've already got it open, um, set um, in the automation, so I'm just going to set it up now. So when I'm creating this loop, what I want to do is basically um, get the conditional jump step to check for the, the value of the button, the message, and it, if it doesn't find it, I want it to go back and reload the page or repeat the scrape. I might just get it to loop the scrape until, because I know it's going to appear after a set amount of time until it appears. Now, um, I can do that simply using the conditional jump step. What I'm going to do is pass the data from the scrape, and that's the value we want to check. And we can see the word message in there. I'm going to press save and close. You'll see now the data token's been plugged in. So we've now plugged in the data from step two into step three, the conditional jump step. Now we can check for different types of data. So we can do words, numbers, we can also create our own custom JavaScript to do that check. And the value I want to check for is simple message. And I can apply some match rules, but I'm going to leave those settings how they are. So what this conditional jump, conditional jump step will do now is it will check for that value. And if it finds that value, it'll either jump or if it, I can set it to jump if it doesn't find that value. In this case, I want to jump if it doesn't find the value because I want it to keep going until it does find it. So I'm going to reverse the condition just down at the bottom and that will make the bot loop and go back to the step I designate, which is going to be, I'm going to jump back to step, step two to repeat the scrape. And so now we've created our loop and we're checking for the value message so basically, the bot, the conditional jump step makes the bot jump back to step two. It makes it scrape the page again for the word message. And until it finds the word message, it will continue to loop. I can control the amount of cycles the bot will loop. So we could wait for 10, or we could wait for 20 loops, 30 loops until the word message turns up. And we can also down there, we can reverse conditions. So you can jump if the value is found or you can jump if the value is not found. And that's how you make a simple loop with the conditional jump step.